Once again, I over highlighted on the plane. I just everything, <laughs> everything's important in this piece. <laughs> but you know, we start with Eric. You tweeted Reuters said U.S. weekly jobless claims hit 19 month low. Labor market recovery gains traction. And you're like, wait, so can we can't file this under Biden crisis? <laughs> What's the mainstream media going to do, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you know, they're obsessed with, um, particularly obsessed with. You know, it's, it's almost in passing reference how the economy is derailed and the economy is in such bad shape. Right. And the, there is inflation. There is a chain supply issue. Unemployment is for something. You know, the stock market is up. The traditional uh, ma matrix that the press uses to determine the state of an economy under a president are, are really quite good. Uh, but so they've, they've decided to go to this this kind of subdivision, the, the, these other matrix that don't look good. And so something like the uh, the jobless claims falling to a 19 month low. Yes, that's the lowest since the pandemic started. Uh, you know that most people covered that in about five or six paragraphs. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. We're almost at a full employment economy at this point. Yeah. Well, I mean, but this whole piece, uh, thank you. This is what I've been talking about forever when we talked about uh, Saturday night. You know, as you know, Wisconsin, birthplace of unions. But mm -hmm. you just, right. can I just give people a little taste? When Republicans launched a frontal assault on American workers earlier this year, the press was right there to help them echo their bogus claims. Both should now apologize for smearing the U.S. workforce, belittling would-be employees for being lazy and living off the government dole as generous unemployment benefits swelled during the pandemic. Conservatives invented a bogus economic theory that Biden had created created a nationwide worker mm -hmm. shortage. The GOP's Dixon, Dixonian move to cut off benefits, which cost the state nothing, was supposed to solve the workplace shortage and send Americans dashing out of their homes and back to work when government checks stopped arriving. Turns out cutting off extended benefits has done nothing to boost labor force participation. Will the media hold to account Republican governors who slash much needed aid for no reason? Um, and you say the press also boosted the Fox News storyline by constantly interviewing employers about the worker shortage without giving voice to workers, which produced a one-sided view of the conflict. And you talk about how it filtered down even a local coverage. It, yeah, when yeah. you interview all employers, <laughs> no workers, you're obviously not going to get the <laughs> story, what? right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's gotten better. Uh, you know, I think there have been some good uh, deep looks at what is causing this shift. We are living through a cultural and labor historical moment right now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the number that freaked everyone out recently was four point million people quit their jobs uh, in, in August, I think it was August yeah. or September. Yeah. A million of them had no jobs to go to. So it, it wasn't like this was all pre-planned. There is just a massive realignment going on. And it's got absolutely nothing to do with $300 benefit checks that the government was sending them. As yeah. I pointed out in my piece in the spring, Republican governors just created this out of whole cloth. It started in Montana and then 25 Republican governors cut off aid, which they weren't paying for. It was all free money from the federal right. government. Right. And they said, no, no, the Chamber of Commerce told us we had to, turn, we had to cut it off because people aren't going to work. And the problem with the press is, they basically accepted that. And even yeah. though economists in real time were telling them, no, this doesn't make any sense. There's I had this, this. conversation on my vacation, Eric, face to face. Yeah. Someone's, you know, I was on a little bike trip. Yeah. Someone was like, yeah, well, you know, we can't get, you know, workers because, you know, they're, they mm -hmm. want to stay home and get those government checks. And I just, <laughs> you know, when you're in your private life, you try not to. And I was like, I know, right? Or maybe they just don't want to work for crappy pay and no benefits and get, <laughs> don't, maybe that. Well, it, 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 you know, it's very interesting. At Press Run, I also did a weekend thread about it. And I said, you know, I asked readers if they had been there, they had done any dramatic labor, you know, workplace changes during the pandemic. And a lot of people wrote back early retirement, early retirement. Mm -hmm. You know, I worked the, the I worked places for 20, 30 years. They didn't care about me. Yeah, uh, they treated me like oh. dirt. Uh, I wasn't getting promotions. You know, the, the American yeah. worker has become insanely efficient over the last two or three decades. 
Uh, the profits from the corporations have gone through the roof. Billions. They're making billions. billions. You, I mean, you and, reference and, um, Paul Krugman real quick, just the revolt, yeah, yeah, yeah. the revolt of the American worker. He said yeah. long-suffering American workers who've been underpaid and overworked for years may have hit their breaking point. And you just said no question priorities and lifestyles changed during the pandemic. The disruption prompted millions of U.S. workers to rethink their lives, ask, ask whether it was worth staying in lousy jobs. And by the way, this all goes to the legislation we're talking about now. You said hurdles yeah. that remain in terms of returning to work include a lack of child care due to an unprecedented shortage of underpaid child care workers, a mismatch between the skills employers want, and you said trying to ding Biden with a made-up claim about today's employee shortage, Republicans set out to smear American workers, and the press never should have helped. I mean, yeah. it's, yeah. But, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, the, you know, and, and, and a couple of the important points are, you know, up until like six or eight months ago, you know, nobody would pay $15 an hour. Right. I mean, yeah. the, you know, industries are across the board and, and, and business just just absolutely yeah. refuse to budge that. And then they say, oh, OK, we'll pay you 15, 15 dollars an hour. And people still aren't coming back because they're still shitty. <laughs> they're still oh, coming. Oh, back. Wow. Oh, no. Eric, Eric Bollard has never dropped an S-bomb on it. Wow. Nobody saw that coming. Look at <laughs> this Go distinguished Eric. scholar with, yeah. the, with the smart guy glasses. Go wow. Eric. OK. All right. <laughs> you are correct. They are any jobs. Fun. Yeah, and, and um, uh, sorry about that. And uh, so, um, but they're still not coming back because they're still not worth it. And you mentioned the Biden, you know, build back better. What's a huge portion of yeah. it is childcare infrastructure. It's not a spending bill, it's an investment bill. Yeah. And one of the things they would be investing in is paying childcare workers building new you know a uh, child care place. i think if you have a job or, i think know, that's the most significant game changer in the in the whole bill